When I'm performing my tracks, I think of two kinds of tricks. There are slow tricks and fast tricks. And uh, slow tricks are things I do while I'm planning out my next fast trick. And uh, fast tricks are time-sensitive stuff like muting and unmuting or changing pattern in time or reloading patterns. I can demonstrate a few slow tricks. So with slow tricks, I would do things like slowly change the filter cutoff on everything. So this is a slow trick, changing the cutoff on the bass or the filter. And then this is a fast trick. Unmuting and unmuting unmu and unmuting. So uh, one way I like to do slow tricks is to change, for example, the cutoff while changing the track. So I'll be changing the filter cutoff on all three of the melodic tracks. So it'll go something like this. I'll select bass. change the cutoff, and then I'll change to the lead, and then change to the adds. We run into the problem where there will be huge changes in the track level. So what I'll often do when this doesn't work, where I'm switching tracks with my left hand, I'll keep my left hand on the track level encoder instead, and then just change tracks with my uh, right hand. So it'll go like this, change the bass. And as I turn it, turn the filter cutoff up, or the resonance, it'll get louder. So I'll turn down the track level to compensate. Same with the lead. So I'll turn down the track level. And when I'm turning the filter cutoff back down, I'll turn up the track level. Same with the lead, or the pads. Turned up the resonance and cutoff, so I'll lower, lower the track level. And as I lower the filter cutoff, I'll turn up the track level. And lower the resonance. And then here's a fast trick. And the reload. So yeah, those are the slow tricks. And so filter is one of my usual targets when I'm doing slow tricks. But there's also the synth page, the second synth page, where the A and B levels are. Those are also very nice to change. So listen to the lead. Let's listen to it in context. So I'll turn up the filter, filter cutoff, and then change the synth level, or A and B level. Actually, it's drenched in reverb, so let's just turn those down and then listen again to only the lead. Not the difference wasn't as huge as I expected. So let's try on the pads. 
let's first turn up the filter so we can hear what's going on in the high end. So uh, with everything it'll be like So, uh, uh, yeah, that's that's how I usually think. So there's uh, track level. Always try to keep track of how loud the sound is. And usually when you turn stuff up, I turn the track level down. And I very often end a pattern. Like uh, when I'm on the last page, that's when I'm all the way up on the track level or the A and B levels on the filter cutoff and filter resonance and the track level is all the way down and right before it switches I will do a pattern reload so that it returns to the default state. There are more examples but I didn't I haven't prepared any examples of changing the ratio or feedback level or harmonics but those are definitely things you can do as a slow slow trick. Yeah, that's slow tricks. And then there's uh, fast tricks. So fast tricks are the time sensitive things like muting and unmuting, the re reloading of patterns, the switching of patterns. So what I usually do is that while I'm doing a slow change, like changing the uh, filter cutoff, and I know that by the end of this pattern, I'm going to unmute the drums, then I will, as soon as I'm getting closer, I will just stop doing all slow tricks and move my hands down to either function and the track I want to mute, or I will already have pressed uh, function and bank so that I can, uh, I can just mute them by pressing the button. It's, it's a bit hard to explain, so I'm just going to have to do something and then explain what I did. So uh, let's try that again. Let's try a different pattern. This one. So, okay, uh, so while I'm doing slow tricks and I know a mute is coming up, uh, this is from, uh, this is just muscle memory from the dig attack, but I like just single pressing to mute. So this motion where I'm just pressing function back and then accidentally hitting MIDI instead, uh, this is just something I do automatically so I can do this to mute and unmute and it's literally the same thing as pressing function and then muting and unmuting but I'm more comfortable with just knowing that I can mute and un unmute with one hand so uh, yeah while I'm uh, turning stuff I will uh, when I'm getting closer to the place I want to mute, I will stop doing this low trick and then move my hand down to the uh, function bank and then move my right hand to mute the track. Uh, so that's the thing with uh, fast tricks. I I stop the slow trick and then I, I will, for example, with the pattern reload, I will just move my hand so that it's perfectly aligned. So first uh, go into mute mode and then 
my hand over the function and know to reload pattern and then the tracks I want to mute. So it's like all in one motion right at the end and then I will unmute before the next pattern starts. I also remember pressing page to mute the kicks and that's because on the drum track, which is just a 16 step pattern with I think there's one uh, every second loop this kick will play. And on the last of four loops, the actually the open hat will play. And uh, all the kick tricks have the negative fill condition so that I can mute just the kicks by pressing the fill button. which is slightly different from simply muting. And uh, that leads me to my mute timings. So I very often mute uh, four steps at a time. Usually at the end of a 64 step pattern, I will sometimes mute the last four steps. And sometimes, or more often, I will mute not the four last steps in a 64-step pattern, but the next four steps, the first four steps of the next pattern. So let me demonstrate uh, muting the last four steps of a pattern. Actually, that was eight steps. Uh, yeah, it's just muscle memory. So, uh, muting the first steps. It's just a sound I like a lot. And uh, sometimes, uh, when I'm muting the first four steps, I sometimes include the first kick and other times I will mute before the first kick. So uh, even if you miss and you hear the kick when you meant to mute it or you accidentally mute the kick when you wanted to hear it, that difference doesn't really matter. It'll sound just as good. It just It's just not what you expected, so it sounds weird in your head, but it doesn't sound weird to anyone else. And then there's Pattern Reload, and uh, if you've seen a few of my videos, you'll see me spamming Function No at the end of a pattern. And that's so that I will reload the pattern before the switch, so that when I return to this pattern, it'll be re already be reset. But I'll also spam it so that in case I forgot to reload the next pattern, I'll reload it immediately. So uh, I'll, I'll go like this sometimes uh, during uh, pattern changes. So let's try that. Let's go from the main one pattern to the main two pattern. And I'll demonstrate why what it sounds like when you forget to do it. So main one sounds like this. Main two sounds like this. Uh, yeah, so let's do some slow tricks. Like turn up the bass or the filter on the bass. And then um, 
no, I'll exit mute mode again so I can select tracks normally. And then switch. And then... Yeah, this is just something that's unique to this track, but on the uh, page setup menu, I have change length set to 16. And uh, that's because on this track in particular, I made, uh, I have the main patterns, main one and main two, but I also made a separate uh, ending and it sounds like this, and it's only 16 step, 16 steps long, is it? Yeah, it's only 16 steps long. And this is an endlessly looping end pattern. So that, which is meant to go into main two. So let's uh, listen to the end, this pattern and then switch to the main two pattern. And uh, so main two also has an end pattern, which goes like this. Which leads perfectly into the, uh, I think, uh, this pattern, which is, I didn't name it, it's just a pause thing. So, uh, but yeah, the, the thing I wanted to show was, what, if you forget to reload pattern, it'll sound like this. Let's let's do slow changes. Yeah, so it's loud, so I'll turn down the track level. And then switch to the next pattern. So now we're on the next pattern. Let's uh, Let's say we want to turn it down by turning down the filter cutoff. And since we forgot to reset the previous pattern, it'll suddenly be the wrong intensity. So this is a bit more intense than I expected. And suddenly doing a pattern reload will might sound strange. So that's that's why I like to spam pattern reload right before the next pattern and then when it switches to the next pattern keep spamming function no to reload the pattern just in case I forgot to do it earlier. Usually changing patterns is pretty straightforward. You usually have a 64 step time window to do the pattern change. But on this track, since I have the change length set to 16, I have to really be careful not to just switch pattern too early. So I have to wait until the first 48 steps are finished, and then I have 16 steps to do the pattern change, or actually less, because I think if you reach step 15 and then do the pattern change, it's too late. So you have uh, these steps to do it on. So yeah, that's one time where a uh, pattern change will be very time sensitive. So it'll be a pretty fast trick. I make mistakes very often and they make it in the final track because very often the mistakes I make sound bad to me because I didn't expect them, but it doesn't really sound bad to the listener because it's the first time they heard the track, but you've been practicing a pattern like for an hour before recording or just play it. You're, you've been jamming for an hour and then when you finally record the track and then you miss a cue, it sounds wrong to you because you've been jamming on it for so long. But it's only you it, uh, it sounds wrong to. So uh, don't worry too much if you uh, mess up. But if you do mess up with, for example, coming back to a track where uh, the intensity is too high. Let's see, let's increase the drive on everything. Like if you switch back to this pattern and it sounds like this, but you expected it to be a lot softer, a pattern reload 
might be a bit jarring. So instead you could like slowly, slowly turn it down, like... Or maybe slowly remove the bass and then turn down the filters and then unmute the, mute the drums. And then there you have a new ending. It's not what you expected or planned, but you managed to salvage the botched pattern because you forgot to do a pattern reload earlier. So even if uh, things don't go as planned, you could still salvage your, your track. Yeah, so when I make mistakes early on, like in the first first 64 steps or... Yeah, usually the, if I make a mistake in the first 64 steps, I will just stop re-record and then try again. Uh, but if I've been recording for two minutes or three minutes and I make a mistake, then I just can't be bothered with recording the whole thing again because I did a lot of other cool things and I don't want to lose that. So I'll just make the most of the out of the mistake I made. Usually, not always, but usually it's it just it sounds just fine, the mistake. And uh, let's see, is there anything else? Mm. Nope, that's it. Bye.